So I will start today the meeting. I'm gonna help you to design your Berlin. As I mentioned the last meeting, your Berlin due to the position of your Berlin rested on this inclined or this sloped surface. Unfortunately, the direction of the applied load is not parallel to the X or Y of the cross section. So we are going to break this load to two components, one in Y and one in X. That means we should expect moment about Y axis and the moment about X axis. That means we will have by axial moment. This case is called by axial moment. Uh, using the angle of inclination, which is the angle for this inclination for the surface that the Berlin is rested on. So we will calculate the typical moment, W squared by two, and then I will break this moment to two components, one about X, one about Y, using cosine and sine. Then I will assume a Berlin, a cross section from the table, and then I need to apply this interaction equation to make sure the left side is smaller than or equal one. If it is, it's safe. If it is not, it's unsafe, and we need to increase the cross-section. Keep in your mind the dominator for this term from the table. The dominator from this term can be uh, located from the table. However, the dominator from the other term, the second term, phi m n y, should be uh, calculated. So phi. I'm gonna use point nine. M N Y equal Z Y time F field. Keep in your mind. Uh, even also this term, if it is not, if you don't have the tables, I can say phi equal point nine also. And M N X equal zx time a field. But the whole term is already exist in the table. Unfortunately, this term does not exist. So this is the reason why I need to calculate it. Does that make sense? So let's do an example today. But before doing the example, do you have any questions so far? Guys, do you have any question? If you have any question at any time, just go ahead and speak to me. Uh, we have typical example like your uh, project that you will do very soon. We have a truss and we have Berlin. Looks like we have Berlin on the member, but it's not right. But anyway, we should have more members like this. Anyway, it's not a big deal. That makes sense. So each Berlin must be located at joint, not on the member itself. This is not our problem. We have a roof system. Consists of trusses. And these trusses are spaced 15 feet apart. Anybody in this meeting can tell me what is the meaning of this 15? What will be uh, 15 to be used? A roof system consists of trusses and the spacing between these trusses equal 15. 15 will be used for something related to the Berlin. Yes, it's the S for the main system. That's right. That's right. I understand this. But uh, what does it mean regarding the Berlin itself? Do you have any idea? 
this 15 feet will do something for the Berlin. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Mitchell. It's uh, the correct or the best uh, description, span of the Berlin. Or length, that's fine. Keep in your mind, if you have a truss and you have another truss and we have a spacing between the two trusses, which is 15, keep in your mind, between this truss and this truss, we have Berlin. Between this truss and this truss, we have Berlin. Between this truss and this truss, we have Berlin. That means if you would like to design or to analyze structural analysis for this Berlin, this Berlin will be simply supported between the two trusses and the span of this simply supported beam will be 15 feet, which is the value of S, the spacing between the main systems. Does that make sense? Is it clear for everybody? So keep in your mind, the spacing between the main system is also the span of your Berlin. I'm gonna assume it's simply supported between the two trusses. This is the first information. Berlins are to be placed at the joints, at the midpoint of each top chord member. That's fine, it's not our deal. And we are given dead load. The dead load, which is given, including an estimated weight for the Berlin. So no need to consider the weight of the Berlin. The dead load is given total dead load 21 bound per square feet. Bound per square feet. And the life load is given 21 bound per square feet. Since you are talking about this surface of the roof, the dead load given bare surface area, bare surface area, bound per square feet. So if you would like to figure out the dead load on each Berlin, what should I do? The life load on each Berlin, what should I do? Then I can figure out the W ultimate, which is 1.2 for the dead load on the Berlin plus 1.6 time life load on each Berlin. This is the idea. And keep in your mind, your Berlin will be simply supported beam under the effect of uniform distributed load. How much? W ultimate. Then I can figure out the moment, which is WL squared divided 8 parabola, the highest value of this parabola, WL squared divided 8. Anybody can help me to figure out what will be the dead load on each Berlin? Is it 21? No, because this load must be bound per foot. Linear, not surface. So what should I do for this 21 dead load given bound per square feet to convert it to dead load per each Berlin? What should I do? Any help? Any help how to convert the surface load on the whole surface of this roof to linear load on each Berlin? Any idea? The idea is, no, I will not convert it to joint load. Uh, keep in your mind, keep in your mind, the given load is surface. And we have Berlin. And we have another Berlin. And we have another Berlin. 
if you would like to convert this surface load to uniform distributed load on one Berlin, that means each Berlin is supporting from center line to center line between the two Berlins. So if you multiply the surface load by this width from the center line to center line, you can convert the surface load to linear load like we did with beams. Exactly. Like we did before uh, in the uh, last week, not this week. So keep in your mind from this center line to this center line, this is the area assigned to this Berlin. So if you multiply the dead load, which is bound per square feet, and the live load, which is bound per square feet, if you multiply these values by the width of this area, you will convert the surface load to uniform distributed load on each Berlin. So I need to multiply 21 by, what is the spacing? We have four every 15 feet, four, one, two, three, four. That means the center line to center line for each Berlin will be how much? Any help? Can you translate this meaning? What will be the spacing between center line to center line? It will be what? Not 15, unfortunately. Not 15. We have four. This is the number. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is the number. That means this is span equal 15. This one equal 15. This one equal 15. So between center line to center line will be 7.5. Yes, Alexander, yes, 7.5. It's confused a little bit, but be careful. It's confused, but you have to read your problem carefully. Uh, 15 is not the spacing between Berlin for this one. Because four represent this is spacing, this is spacing, this one and this one. So we have four spacing, each 15. So between this one and this one will be 7.5, not 15. And the life load, which is given also 21, will be multiplied by 7.5. So these values will be uh, 21 times 7.5. I got 157.5, 157.5. If you would like to figure out the W ultimate, you need to multiply the loot by 1.2, life, uh, life loot by 1.6. So 157.5 1, uh, time 1.2 plus 1.6 time 157.5. I got here 441 bound bare foot or 0. 0.441 cap bare foot. So the uniform distributed load here will be 0. 0.441. If you would like to figure out your moment, WL squared, remember the span of this Berlin equal 15 feet. The spacing between the main system. That makes sense? So W time L square, 15 square, divide it. I got 12.4. Keep foot. This is the value of M ultimate. This is the value of M ultimate. Equal 12.4 keep foot. Since your Berlin rested on sloped surface, 
we must figure out the value of m ultimate x and the value of m ultimate y. If you would like to figure out the value of m ultimate x, go ahead and multiply m ultimate times cosine. M ultimate y, your m ultimate times sine. Which angle? I'm going to use sine and the cosine, the angle of inclination. This angle. The angle of inclination of the sloped surface with the horizontal. This is the angle theta. If it's not given, go ahead and figure it out. I think I can create this right angle triangle. I think this height equal 10 feet. I think this length equal 30 feet. I think I can figure out the angle theta. Your angle theta will be in verse 10. 10 divide 30. I got angle equal 18. 0.4 degree. Then I can use it here 12.4 cosine this angle theta. I can use it here also 12. I'm sorry. Twelve point four times sine your angle theta. So twelve. 0.4 time cosine 18.4, I got 11.7 or 11.8. Uh, 12.4 times sine 18.4, I got 3.9. These two values represent the Nominator for the two terms, m ultimate x and m ultimate y. Piece of cake. It's very easy. Nothing uh, hard. It's very easy. Do you have any questions so far? So it's very easy. What is the value of dead load bound per square feet? What is the value of life load bound per square feet? We have estimation for these values, if you remember. We have estimation for these values. If they are not given, I can figure them out using this estimation. There you go. The dead load, if the own weight of the Berlin is not given, we can assume it's something between 50 and 200 pound per foot. If you have corrugated steel sheet, I can assume it 25 to 50 pound per square feet. If you have concrete slab, I can use this equation to figure out the own weight of slab, and I can figure out the WD load equal WG. This is the weight of the Berlin plus the covering uh, material time space. I did not use this expression in our example because there own weight of the Berlin is already included in this value, bound per square feet. So I used only this value by spacing. That's all. But if this term is not including, the own weight of the Berlin is not included, then I need to add here another value for the own weight of the Berlin. But this is not the case. And also, we covered this before for life load. We can figure out the value of life load based on these cases. If you have floors, if you have a sloping, and what is the angle of this sloping, then we can figure out the uh, life load. Keep in your mind, each Berlin is supporting from center line to center line. So I need to multiply any load bound per square feet which is surface to be multiplied by the width of the area assigned to this Berlin. And keep in your mind, the span of your Berlin as simply supported beam is the spacing between the main system. So I can set up this simply supported beam with uniform distributed load, and I can figure out this moment, WL squared divide eight, this moment, 
must be broken to two components, Mx and My, because we have angle theta. If you don't have angle theta, we don't have M ultimate X, M ultimate Y. We have only one moment. We can design it as a typical beam. But right now, we have a beam. Do you have any question? Guys, do you have any questions so far? Okay. Uh, we will look for the dominators of this equation. To figure out the dominator, we need to assume cross-section. I will select one. Which one? I don't know. We will draw a trial. Uh, but we have a guide here. We are going to use W shape. I'm going to use W shape. So I will open the tables. We have the table of cross-sections and the table, uh, not this one, I'm sorry, the tables for beam. So what do you think, guys? Which cross-section you are going to use? We have many W sheets. As I told you before, don't try the biggest one and don't try the smallest one. Go ahead and select one in between. Go ahead and select one in between. I think we can select something around W10, W12. Uh, will be good. We can try this one, W12 by something. I don't have guide, but uh, you can try. Let's uh, try this one. W12 by 50. This one. So I will assume my cross section is W12 by 50. For this cross section, I can figure out phi M N X, which is the nominator, I'm sorry, dominator for this term, phi M N X, phi M N X. I can use tables to figure out this value. So I need to open the tables of design of beam and look here for W, which cross section, 12 by 50. So I will go down and figure out for W 12 by 50, 12, 12, 12, Probably I need to go down more. 12, we have 12 here. We have 12, but 190. So go down, get down, 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 down. 12, 12, 87. I think 12 by 58, 12 by 53. Here you go. We have W12 by 50. W12 by 50. This cross section W12 by 50. Here is the value of A M plastic X. Fay M plastic X is the same meaning. Fay M N X is the same like Fay M plastic X, the same meaning. What is the value? Uh, 12 by 50. What is 12 by 50? This one. So the value will be 270. 270 is too much. 270. It will be more safe. 250. Uh, how much? I'm sorry. Uh, well, by 50. Yes, 270. Keep foot. Unfortunately, for Fay MNY, we don't have table for these values. So I will assume, uh, not assume, Fay equal 0.9. And then multiply ZY by a field. What is the value of ZY? I need to open the table. I need to open the tables. But for the section properties, for W12 by 50, this one, I need to go down for the next page, 12 by 50, 
here is the section properties about y. Here is the term called z about x is y, y. So what is the value of z, y? 21.3, 21.3. The value of F yield, if yield is given in the problem, 15. So I can figure out this term, it will be 0.9 time 21.3 time 50, I got nine, five, eight point five. Okay. So we are selecting very large cross section. By, by the way, one more time, guys. Uh, point nine times ZY time F yield ZY, this is called the section properties. I need to open the tables for section properties. For W12 by 50, we have here all dimensions. If you would like to get the properties, you need to go to the next page. For W12 by, uh, by 50, this is the uh, value 50. Then I can figure out the Z about Y axis. That makes sense. Then I can figure out this term. So the final conclusion, we have M ultimate X divided by phi M N X. This is the interaction equation. M ultimate Y divided by phi M N Y must be equal, uh, smaller than or equal one. Let's see the value of M ultimate X from your structure analysis was 11.8, 11.8. And your dominator phi M N X from the table, 270. This is the reason why I told you we, we are selecting a very large cross section. M ultimate Y from structure analysis, 3.9. Phi M N Y, 958.5. I think, I believe if you add the first term plus the second term. Let me check here something. Uh, 50. For W12 to buy 50. Okay. So what will be the value? I think it will be smaller than one, 11 point eight divided by, do you, do you think we have a mistake here? Guys, do you think we have a mistake? Anybody can see something I cannot see? Because this number does not make sense for me. Thank you. Yes. This Z in inch to power three. That's fine. We don't have problem. This F yield is bound or kept or KSI, which is kept bare square inch. That's fine. I don't have any issue. Inch and the inch and the point nine, we don't have issue. But this number is a moment keep dot inch and this value is keep foot from structure analysis keep 
foot. And even 270 from the table, fade in the plastic is kept foot. So this one must be kept foot also. I have to divide it by 12. This is the only mistake I did not recognize. So this one will be 79, that makes sense, 79.8 keep foot. I divided it by 12. And if that makes sense, your moment about Y must be smaller than the moment about X. About X is the biggest. So that makes sense. This value will be 79 by 0.8. So this term will be 11.8 divided 270 equal 0 0.044. This term will be 3.9 divided 79.8 equal 0 0.048. The two terms, this one and this one, will give you 0. 0.93, which is smaller than one which is safe. Unfortunately, I can say it's more safe. It's more safe. If you would like to design an economic cross-section, the left side should be around 0.9 to 0.95. Which is smaller than one safe and the economic. But right now you are selecting a cross section W 12 by 50 can support too much moment about X, too much moment about Y. However, the applied moment about X is 11.8 only and about Y 3.9 only. This is the reason why the left side is very small because you are selecting very strong cross section. So my recommendation in your exam, you are done because your cross-section is safe. But in the practical solution, no, I need to select a smaller cross-section. We still have more, smaller. W8, W6, W5, W4. We can try smaller cross-section. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So the best way to select a smaller one to get an economic design. But right now we are good. We can assume W12 by 50 will be good for these buildings. Keep in your mind, uh, for your design of Berlin, we have two steps, two main steps. The first one is called the structural analysis, loading and what is the internal forces uh, M ultimate and M ultimate X, M ultimate one. The second step is the step of design. You need to assume a cross section and then what is the phase M plastic X, what is the phase M plastic Y, and then you need to set up your interaction equation to make sure the left side is smaller than or equal, at least the right side. Any question? Any question regarding this example? Okay. How to design a steel column? How to design steel column. If you have a steel column, in your building, and this is steel column under the effect of axial compressive force P ultimate only, P ultimate only. So this column will be considered a member under compression which is design of column, 
we can say design of member under compression, P ultimate under compression. So we learned this before. Your design strengths, design compressive strengths of this column equal phi F critical time area gross. Phi equal 0.9. Area gross, the total cross section area of your member, if critical can be determined using this expression or this expression. Which one I'm going to use based on if this relationship is satisfied, we are going to use the first one. If this relationship is satisfied, we are going to use the second one. Keep in your mind for this expression or even this expression, we have a term here called FE. FE is called the elastic buckling stress equal by square E divided by KL divided R, all of them square. That makes sense? That makes sense? So, how to design a steel column under the effect of axial compressive force be ultimate is the same concept like member under compression and we covered this before do you have any question so far guys keep in your mind this is a very good point i would like to highlight it we need to understand assume we have this call Assume we have this cone. Is it correct? My 3D looks like yes. Something like this. This is a steel cone. Sometimes, not sometimes, but most of the time, we are providing Keep in your mind, this is the X axis. This is the Y axis. Anybody in this meeting can tell me which axis is stronger. About X or about Y. This column is stronger about, about, keep in your mind, about which axis. Can you imagine this column is stronger if this column would like to be broken or to be bent? about x which one will be the stronger one why oh no no it's not about i said about means around rotating around this is the reason about means rotating about or around it's x it should be x if you try to bend or to break this column around X, it will be stronger. Then, if you would like to break this one about one, or to be more specific, like this. So which direction is stronger right now? Around or about X is stronger than about Y. Does that make sense? That makes sense? I can show you on Google uh, W shape steel columns with
Is it clear? Not clear. Uh, <laughs> so I can find uh, one. Yeah, uh, we can imagine this is a steel column. Uh, or this one, it's a beam, but uh, this cross section is stronger about uh, x axis and weaker about y axis. So, what you will do to overcome this issue, uh, I will provide here. I'm sorry. I will provide here bracing to buckle this column. With another I beam this way and this way. Can you imagine? So since it's a column, height is weaker around, around or about y-axis, I need to support this column around or about this direction. So I provided this lateral support to buckle your column. However, this direction which is outside the plane is good, is very strong. So I don't need any lateral support this way. That makes sense? I don't need any lateral support this way. So sometimes we are given a column, a steel column, and we can find different lenses for your column. One is called the 20 feet and the one is called the 40 feet. Oh my goodness. It is the same column. How can the column has two lenses, two heights? One is 40 and one is 20. Actually, the actual column has only one height. But this column about X axis has the total height of the column. So the L around or about X equal for D. However, this column about Y will have this lens alone and this lens alone if you have buckling. That makes sense? So from here to here, I can call it L around Y or about Y equal 20. So don't be confused if I'm giving you example like this and I'm telling you, hey, we have two lenses for your column. How can I have two lenses for a column? It's only one length and the same column, one height, but this column is supported laterally in one direction and is not supported laterally in the other direction. This is the reason why we have two different lenses of your column. Keep in your mind, this lens is very big because this lens is uh, resisted by Ix. And this lens is very small and is resisted by Iy. If you open any table to look for Ix and Iy, you will have Ix here equal to 172, Iy here equal 88.6. So all the time Ix is greater than Iy too much. This is the reason why your column is very weak around or about y-axis, and this is the reason why we need to buckle this column 
to support more loot. 